Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a canned peach mead. Let's get started. All right, so there are probably a million ways to make a peach mead. And of course, they range from buying fresh fruit to buying canned fruit to um, juicing your fruit to buying peach juice itself. At the end of the day, this is just one of a lot of methods to make a peach mead, and I'm trying to create a bunch of them. <laughs> so here is the canned version, and um, it requires these things. This recipe is for two gallons, really what boils down to be about a gallon and a half, ultimately. Um, and it has the following things in it. I used um, Tupelo honey, which you could use clover honey, wildflower honey, any kind of honey like that. I also used uh, clover honey. So I used 1.5 pounds of Tupelo honey, three pounds of clover honey. I used the Premier Classique because it's a, a wine yeast that is intended to help uh, keep fruity flavors. It's, um, it's also the Montrachet, which is good for whites and white wines and kind of keeps that fruitiness, which I like. Um, three pound, three pounds of peaches. I bought three cans of that were each one pound. The peaches were canned with 100% juice, which I know people are gonna frown at, but we'll talk about it. And then I also, in the secondary, or excuome me, in the post-fermentation stage, back sweetened with uh, about, uh, it was a pound of orange blossom honey and a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. So that's your recipe. Pretty much all of that is available at Walmart if you're, or your supermarket. Canned peaches are widely available. The honey varietals, um, you might have to supplement out and use wildflower clover, those things essentially. Um, but I just so happen to have Tupelo. And while, will it change a little bit of the flavor from this mead? Yes. I did not use all Tupelo honey. Here it is right here. This is a gallon of it. Now, the process started with gathering those ingredients, sanitizing everything, of course. So I used star sand, I'm a big fan of star sand. Um, sanitized all my equipment, and we mixed together in a big container the three pounds of peaches, the four and a half pounds of honey, and then we did water up to the two gallon mark. We took a drill bit to that and just power drilled it like crazy, essentially and uh, got everything stirred up. We then went ahead and added our yeast. Um, I did use some Fermade O as yeast nutrient, which is important. So uh, I will, well, I put all of that into the primary, into the beginning stage. I didn't step feed because I had started a bunch of projects. The best thing you can do is honestly step feed your yeast. So use a staggered nutrient schedule or Tazna SNA schedule if uh, you want to make this well and make it good. So that's, that's the best thing you can do. Uh, added those things in, pitched the yeast, stirred it up, and we let it start fermenting. The yeast partied with those peaches and uh, fermented through. We started at, at 1.100 gravity for our starting gravity, and after the primary, we finished at 1.000. Um, I used a hydrometer, by the way, which is this thing right here I'm holding um, to create, or to, excuse me, to measure the gravity, specific gravity. Uh, if you want to be a, a mead maker that is successful, a lot of the time you will get a hydrometer. Um, after the primary, we pulled it off and I used this strainer thing. This is for beer. Now you can find, you can use a strainer or something at your house, but this is a very fine mesh strainer that was really nice for catching the peach pieces, peach fruit, as they tried to go into the container I was uh, racking into. So if you can use something like this, this will eliminate a lot of your problems. This is not clear. Again, we'll talk about it in a second, but this will help you. So I moved it over and uh, in that same time, I did a taste test. So let's see what it tastes like. All right, we're a month old, so I wanna do a quick taste test. This is after racking and some things. Yeah, it's still a little yeastiness. I mean, it's it's pretty young. It's got a bite. I mean, it's got a very apparent punchy in the face bite. I think um, 
with it being dry, 1.000, it needs some back sweetening for sure. Bring back some of that um, peach flavor that we're missing because that the peaches have been really fermented upon. Um, obviously this had sugar coming from the syrup in it. So I decided not to get rid of that syrup because it had some flavor in it. It does have a decent mouthfeel though. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and back sweeten. So voiceover Garrett's gonna describe what's gonna happen next. So that was the 30 day tasting. Pretty yum, obviously just talked about it there. I wanted to back sweeten and I wanted to kind of take, bring the sweetness back out, but also kind of figure out how to temper down the alcohol um, and then also try to make it more round. So there's a couple ways you can go about this. Um, I felt like the acidity was nice. We're gonna push that guy to the side. The tannin, which is uh, the mouthfeel, was something that was kind of funky on this. And I decided not to oak it only because I want to keep this as close to a accessible Walmart brew without having to go to a bunch of brew shops. Oaking this would have probably helped a lot, honestly, um, using a French oak, something like that. The sweetness was adjusted via honey. <laughs> so we stabilized it. Big, big important thing here. We stabilized it with potassium sorbate, potassium metabisulfite. Those two in conjunction take a fermentation and they say no more. And they do not allow, allow your yeast to ferment on any more of the sugars. Um, you can alternatively stabilize via pasteurizing, which is heating the liquid up. And I'll put that, that up here. You can also take in a uh, cold crash it, which is not a permanent solution. It's only temporary. So that's a temporary solution for this. And the final one is you can leave it for an eternity and eventually the yeast might be very important, huge bold text in your face might um, actually stop. There's a chance that they don't though. So time is not valuable. Stabilize your brew before you back sweeten or unless you've capped out your yeast. Uh, stabilized it, waited 24 hours and we added a one pound of orange blossom honey. Again, could be supplement, supplemented out for wildflower, clover, anything you got around you, essentially. And we added to not add taste, but to add a little bit of softness to this brew, we added a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now, specifically, I used, because I have access to it, I used vanilla extract because it was easy for me and I didn't want to use a vanilla bean necessarily. I used this, this Mexican uh, vanilla extract that's very nice. I have this entire imitation vanilla from McCormick I've never used. And quite frankly, I'm going to go with this one. I, I still have a lot left in here. So uh, this is just a nicer quality, probably more true vanilla flavor. Now I wasn't going for flavor, I was going for roundness. And so that vanilla actually took and circled and hugged the brew up and said, hey, let's let's just calm down. And so it, it did not add much, if any flavor, it just added a little bit of softness to it. Kind of like putting a blanket on it. And from there, that was, you know, probably a couple weeks ago. This brew is about almost two and a half months old now. From that point, we let it set. Now you notice something, it's not clear. Um, I kind of tossed and turned over the night thinking about, do I want to try and clear this mead? Um, and how could I have cleared it early on to help you? Well, first of all, I should have used pectic enzyme in my initial brew before fermentation. That would have helped to, um, one, get a little more of the peach flavor out, but also it would help to bring out and clear this brew up easier. I didn't use pectic enzyme, so that's pro tip number one. And uh, number two, do I really want to, I don't know, I, I kind of toss and turn, because here's the deal, right behind this thing, I've purposely planned this, this is a clear mead. Look at that thing, you can see my hands, it's so beautiful, oh my gosh, do I, oh, am I putting more value right now behind this clarity, or? this not not as clear to be honest right now i'm gonna i'm gonna say clarity is not the end of the world for this but here we are ready to taste it one thing i didn't do to naturally cold to naturally um clear it up i could have cold crashed it but i didn't look at this thing not it's pretty hazy quite frankly 
But that's not the end of the world, especially because here's how it tastes. I mean, the peachy side of it is so warm and inviting and it has this like very wintry feel to it. The peach flavor is, is pretty well preserved, I will say. The yeast helped with that quite a bit. It's still a little hot. We started at 1.100 gravity after the primary 1.000 and the back sweetening led us to 1.024. So this has some sweetness to it, which is helpful. The alcohol is still present. I'm gonna do probably a tasting in about a year or so to see how it's tempered down. But at the two and a half, a little over two and a half month mark, it's pretty dang good. It's got a little bit of uh, astringency that will, um, as flavors mellow, they will come down and re resolve together. It does have a very big, thick body, even without oaking. And uh, I think that's not in part to the, the vanilla. I think the vanilla has just kind of added and rounded off the tart, sharp notes from it. But the peach flavor is there. Vanilla adds some nice roundness to it. You could do this without the vanilla, but I think it helps. Um, my honey varietals, of course, help to add some complexity, but you don't have to use a bunch of varietals necessarily. I think given some time, this thing is gonna be incredible. Now, again, hearkening back to the question, if this were clear, would this taste different? I don't believe it tastes different. I think it'd just look more appealing. The truth is, the clarity does matter when you're giving things out to people. If I take something to friends um, and I set down both of these carboys next to them and don't tell them anything about them, they're probably gonna go for this one right here because it's a little more clear. And they're gonna say like, that looks a little more trustworthy. Now, should I be worried about that all the time? No, there are ways to clear this. Ectic enzyme, cold crashing. You could use Kisasol, Chitosan, uh, any of the clearing agents. I could let it set for forever it will probably clear up. Is it the end of the world? No. So this thing is really good. And I am super excited to see what it's like given some time. Now I do have one comparison thing I wanna do in this. Because like I said, I'm doing multiple ways to do a peach mead. I have this video, canned peach mead. And I have another video that you're gonna find in the future. It's either, oof, it's either out or not out, or will be out. This is from a, no water peach mead. Now, what I mean by this guy, he is also not clear at all. This is a no water peach mead, meaning I literally used zero water. Uh, also, alternatively, you could use peach juice in this. I didn't though. What does the no water peach taste like? Mm, yeah, they're, comparatively, the no water is much brighter because it's all peach juice and it has more acidity to it. This is more warming, more in, uh, wintry, I would say. But this one does have a lot of um, acidity. It was oaked, and so it has some tannin from that. It has sweetness. They are both very good representations of peach, kind of on different spectrums. You got bright peach versus dark, warm, fruity, pre juicy peach. So this video has been a lot of fun. The cool thing about this is you could take any of those canned fruit you find at your super supermarket or grocery store and do the same thing. You could supplement out, let's say you got, I don't know, canned plums. <laughs> you know, take your three pounds of canned plums, throw them in that, supplement out that recipe right there, and you could basically do the same thing. <laughs> uh, how do I say this? Don't sleep on canned fruit. I think it is worth a shot. Uh, for the people who are going to yell at me for using the juice within that fruit, I understand what you're saying. I do. Um, and I think you could not use the juice from it, but I, I believed that the juice retained some of the flavor from the peach himself. Therefore, I wanted to keep them, keep that fruit or the juice in there, which is why I did that. I hope you've enjoyed this. I will probably do another canned fruit mead in the future. They're very easy to make. I'll throw the recipe up one more time. And again, you could supplement out any canned fruit uh, to try, but I've enjoyed this. Go experiment, and I hope to see you in a future video.
Cheers.